Well, tonight we have the conclusion of our interview with Dr. Steve Pachinik, someone who has served at very high levels in the intelligence community over five U.S. administrations. He talks about a wide variety of subjects from Putin to the Ukraine to the Snowden documents and the real threat that the military industrial complex, especially the intelligence community, poses to America. Let's talk a little bit about Ed Snowden and the documents that are there. You think sure. he's something other than a, a straight up whistleblower. Tell us exactly what you think is going on, who the players are and what their goals are. Well, I, I will tell you very simply, I, I started to think of Snowden a long time ago, as I was saying, uh, I thought he was, and, and, and analyzing him, not as an American, but as a counterintelligence an, uh, operative or somebody who's had experience in counterintelligence, I thought Snowden was very much what I call the manufactured avatar of the American intelligence community. What do I mean by that? I started looking at tapes of Edward Snowden when he was giving these uh, bombastic interviews, self-aggrandizing interviews to the German press and other presses. But in the recent press, in a recent interview, he very clearly stated to the Germans, uh, yes, I was in the special forces, but I broke my ankle. Now, that was not credible to me, because if you're in the special forces, you don't just break your ankle and you don't leave. But he went on to explain that the special forces was something that was a noble endeavor on his part, and he saw it as a, a magnifier of, of military power. In other words, he gave me an explanation that was inconsistent with being a subcontract. Mm -hmm. Then he went on to really indict himself by saying in the interview, I'm a CIA operative. I was recruited by the CIA and then the NSA. So what I'm getting at very quickly was... Snowden is very typical of what we in the intelligence community would want to do, and that is to create an avatar or an image of a person who may be a, a traitor or a whistleblower so that we allow the American public to play off either, either part of two figures that the intelligence community creates. On the one hand, the intelligence community creates this incredible massive sur surveillance where at the same time they want to make sure that they are not acquitted, that they're not judged harshly, so that they make sure they can control the narrative. So they create somebody like Snowden, or in the case that I was talking about as well, is Ellsberg, who also had a similar history, where he was involved in, in the Vietnam War, was a CIA operative on the State Department cover for a general uh, uh, who was called the Quiet American, uh, and, and he then went out and revealed the Pentagon Papers, from Rand Corporation. I subsequently went to the Rand Corporation, and there where do I find, uh, 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 what's his name? I find Ellsberg, I find him at the MIT Center, where I'm trained. And everyone there, except for myself, is trained to go into the CIA. So I realized the CIA was really nursing and initiated a lot of Ellsberg's Pentagon papers. At the same time, they kept him safe at MIT, and very similar to the Snowden affair. Now, why would Snowden attack James Clapper and attack uh, General Keith Alexander, the NSA uh, chief? The reason was there's an initial tension throughout the past 30 years between our civilian intelligence, which is only one-fifteenth of the major intelligence bureaus that we have. We have 16 major intelligence units. 15 of them are in the military and the 15th one, the 16th one is the CIA, a civilian one. For 30 years, there's always been this inherent tension. However, there is what we call the IC, the intelligence community, which at times gets together and decides, look, we have to have a common interest. The common interest now is that we made a mistake in Iraq. We went into Afghanistan. That's a mistake. We have to have a diversion, and as a diversion, we have people like James Clapper, where we created this office of DNI, Director of National Intelligence, which is absolutely absurd. This was an unnecessary organization that was created out of a false flag and a stand-down that we've talked about before with Alex Jones after 9-11. James Clapper is a decent man. He came in. He was from the Air Force. He was military. Keith Alexander created the NSA. But in turn, the entire intelligence community said, look, we're still going to control the narrative of everything that occurred from 9-11 to stand down to Afghanistan to Iraq by creating a good guy who can be seen as a good guy, a whistleblower, or a traitor. And as long as we can create that narrative, we are really in control of the game. 
and that's where the American people have been had. Now, why would they control a game, and what's the game? Mm -hmm. The game is about $60 billion worth of uh, subcontracting from the Pentagon to companies, at least $6 billion, going to Booz Allen. Now, who is Booz Allen? Booz Allen is a uh, consulting firm that I knew in Bethesda that was totally ineffective, controlled by John Michael McConnell, who was former uh, military DCI and vice chairman and was in the, nation, uh, in the head of the NSA, who was closely tied to another man, John Brennan of the CIA, who controls that now, who was controlled, who was also involved with uh, uh, James Woolsey, who was director of the CIA, and James Clapper, all of whom belong to Booz Allen. So you have this game going on where Snowden, uh, in an in a, in a, in apparently bizarre story, reveals all these millions of secrets, which we don't really know about, but some of it is somewhat revealing to somebody, and it says that we have been, uh, we, the United States, have been monitored. So what? We've been monitored since the 50s, and Google and Amazon and all the rest of these private companies have been monitoring much more effectively than NSA. And Snowden goes to Hong Kong, which is not a real uh, uh, safe place, and then ostensibly goes to Russia, where Putin takes care of him. Well, I said to you, Putin has been really an ally. He's, he's taken care of all the people who we don't want to have as the leaders of a country, and he takes care of our transit points into Afghanistan. But in the meanwhile, who are the people involved? We have John Brennan of the CIA, which, which Snowden doesn't say a word about, and he admits readily, I'm a CIA operative. Yet he destroys some CIA assets, but in the meantime, really the game goes on. Then he talks about... Uh, Booz Allen, but he really doesn't go into detail how Booz Allen has taken a $6 billion contract and then enhanced it in conjunction with other intelligence contracts from the Pentagon up to $60 billion. And the American public, that's you and I, are paying for an intelligence that's not worth anything. On the same time, not only is the game played out between Snowden being a spy or a whistleblower, but at the meantime, there is a clear, there's a notion from uh, Alex, uh, uh, Keith Alexander and James Clapper in these uh, meetings in front of Congress, which are disingenuous meetings, that we have a clear and present danger. Well, we don't have a clear and present danger. We don't have terrorists who we've picked up and protected us from these massive explosions. This whole terrorist nonsense has been created by Cheney, Bush, Kagan, Newland, a whole group of neocons in order to justify our presence in an expansion into the Middle East, which has failed dramatically. And so what's happened in return is we've created this monstrosity of an intelligence community, which is neither intelligent nor an effective community, but is sucking out the very lifeline of our country. And I say that as an American citizen, not as an intelligence operative who's overseen these guys. From an intelligence point of view, I've told them repeatedly, I would have fired every one of them. I would have knocked out every one of these 16 agencies because they stove pipe. And now we're going to have a new leader of the NSA, Mike Rogers, an admiral, who really doesn't know anything about this. He's not even the equivalent intellectually or in terms of experience of a Keith Alexander, who was head of MI, military intelligence, G2, and is significantly smarter. Whatever mishaps Keith Alexander's done was done in the process of building up massive surveillance, which we didn't necessarily need, but will not be effective. So in the process of all of this going on, we, not, we do not have an oversight committee. Diane, Diane Feinstein is an antiquated, God only knows, uh, disaster of, of a woman, of a, a legislator. We have Nancy Pelosi. We have Mike Rogers. We have all these nonsensical representatives on the Democrat and Republican side who really are beholden to the intelligence community because their communities have intelligence contracts, oh, yeah. Booz Allen or L3. They're, they're sick of yeah. Let me ask you this, Dr. Pachanek. Now, yeah. the, we've got the civilian versus the military side of the uh, intelligence community, as you pointed out. You've talked about their, right. that, that kind of uh, internecine fighting going on as, as being the roots of Benghazi. But... Are they just incompetent when they put these Snowden documents out because they've really have, the public opinion is not really of a mind to give them a blank check right now, even though it seems like they're getting everyone more or less 
adjusted to the new way of, of thinking about the government, that they're going to monitor everything that we have. And we've got this discussion going on as to whether there is going to be anything such as privacy. So is this a, a limited hangout or is this uh, internecine warfare? Or, or are they trying to build up the intelligence community, but just doing it in a ham-fisted, incompetent way that they're really losing public opinion on this? I think the latter is probably the best way. You've explained it very well. I think it's a hand-fisted, incompetent way. As I said in the blog, and we've just talked about it, the Army has really gone off on its own. It's built its own cap capacity and capability to invade absolutely nothing and to be able to really get into no combat whatsoever. But irrespective of that, the Army has become a centurion army or an imperial army, which is not beholden to the United States. In the same nature, we have a very heavy-handed intelligence community, which is not effective at all. Our human is not effective. Our ELINT is not effective. Our capacity to do massive surveillance is really not effective. We have not picked up any terrorists. All we do is really to counter-effect what's called industrial espionage. But it's not relevant to our livelihood. Our private companies are far more effective, and they move more quickly than the NSA could or even our whole government could, as most people realize. But what they care about the most, the intelligence and the military community, is their own uh, perpetuation as an entity. If they don't give a damn really about what Americans have to say or American civilians. What they care about is that the legislators and the representatives, remember, we're in a republic, not a democracy, mm -hmm. that they allocate the amount of monies that are required to maintain a minimal standing force in the military and a massive presence of intelligence, which is not really effective for intelligence. So you have this added burden. You, they've literally added a second append, uh, uh, append, appendix to a body. Uh, you know, literally, you don't need the DNI. That came out after 9-11. Well, 9-11 was a stand down. So when you look at it, we created our own. We don't need an integrated unit that then integrates other integrated units, which <laughs> never become integrated. It's kind of a, of a Alice in Wonderland phenomenon, and they don't care what the Americans say because they know that the legislators will keep on talking about clear and present dangers. Yeah, that's an, it, I find it interesting that Glenn Greenwald said that the most sensational things he was holding for his soon-to-be-released book, his movie, and the media empire that he's creating with one of the world's wealthiest billionaires, Pierre Amidiar. What do you think is going to uh, come of that? Is that uh, something that's really going to change public opinion, or is the public just too dumb and too numb to do anything about it? I think I don't think the public is dumb. I, I think the American people have been clearly underestimated. I think they're inured to the whole thing. I said from day one some of my friends, that nobody really cares about Snowden and nobody calls about Greenwald. And just what you said was right on the button. That is, uh, Greenwald, whoever he may be or not be, you know, his interest is the same as the interest of the intelligence community, which is to create money, create notoriety, and perpetuate his own uh, narcissism. Uh, no one in the United States of the world really will care very much. As you see, there's a movie about Julian Assange, WikiLeaks. Nobody even sees it. Nobody really cares. And the notion that we're being monitored is kind of passe. Uh, everybody who deals with the Internet, anybody who deals with uh, iPads or iPhones, they know almost automatically that this is uh, a new era. Uh, this is an era which is not going to have sensationalism as it's portrayed. And in many ways, the intelligence community, the military community, really didn't understand the American mentality of saying, you know, so what? Or as my daughter would say, whatever, you know, <laughs> so what? And, and, you know, it's no big thing. The only thing I'm saying that's major about this is that you can't continue this falderal, this nonsense, at the cost of $80 billion a year. Yes. We have yeah. that need for that money for too many other things. Yes, the military-industrial complex is bankrupting us. And the concerns, I think, that everybody has is that it's not only – it's been on foreign wars for the longest time, and now it's turning inwardly, domestically, militarizing the police and, create, and doing espionage on American citizens instead of on foreign governments. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, uh, Dr. Pachenik. We're out of time, but it's been a fascinating well, – pleasure, and, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.